Wanna boost your speed picking and bring your guitar playing to the next level? Then check out the link that I have in today's video. With that you can work on your picking speed, on your picking precision, on string skipping and you can learn one of my favorite picking patterns from the last month. Hey guitar champion, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video and let's check out the lick. <laughs> Before we start with the video, you can get the tabs for today's link here in the description box. There's a link where you can download it. And if you want to support this channel, then feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, and leave a comment and share this link and video with all of your friends on social media. And if you really want to boost your speed picking and bring your guitar playing to the next level, then check out the Zen of Speed Picking, my five hour online course about my favorite technique, speed picking, where I have more than 50 licks and exercises for you to work on certain aspects from your speed picking. All right, so much for the advertisement section here. Now let's take a deeper look into today's lick. Here we go. Okay, so now first of all, the main pattern of this sequence, this lick goes like this. Here we are in the first pattern, mostly in the E minor scale. We're switching between E minor and major. I'm going to talk a little bit about the harmony behind this lick later. And the cool thing about this pattern here, the first pattern that I've just played, is that you can do two things with that. We can first play this one as a scale run. Simply for the, for example, E minor scale or G major scale. But we could also use this pattern to outline chords. Why? Because in the first four notes of this pattern, we are playing, a, here in this case, for example, a C major triad. We are playing, outlining the C major triad by playing the third, the fifth, the root, and going to the third again. So we have here first an arpeggio, sorry, and then we are adding the scale to it. And by adding the scale, we are creating some sort of more kind of interesting uh, note color, harmony color, by adding the major third, sorry, the major seven here, the uh, second here, and the sharp eleven, the Lydian eleven here. But it's so fast that we actually don't um, recognize those um, optional notes as individual color notes. So it's a little bit more blending into the mix and into the overall color of this kind of phrase and this kind of sequence because it's played so fast. When, when we would play it a little bit slower and a little bit more focused on those optional notes here, then the individual color from that note would shine a little bit more in our mix and in our pattern. But by the tempo, it, the, all of the notes gives a certain interesting feeling to that, if you, if you get what I mean. All right, now we can do a few things with this pattern. And believe me, this pattern is going to come a little bit more often here on this channel because I really fell in love with this pattern. Um, before I forget, I was inspired by a guitar player called Steven Taranto with this pattern. And if you don't know Steven Taranto, then definitely go check him out. He's one of my favorite modern current guitar players. All right, so what you can do with, what can you do with this pattern? You can go across the scale. this lick and you can outline an interesting chord progression like in today's lick and in today's lick we have the following chords we are mixing between C major and E major so the first part C major and E major back to C major back to E major and then in the end we have C major D major And by changing through those two chords, we get this kind of, yeah, I would say space feel. I, I call those chords the Star Trek chords. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that was a boring chord. Those were the Star Trek chords. Star Wars chords. Because those chords. 
chords sounds for me like if you are floating through space or if you are discovering some places where no one has gone before. Like shredding by subscribing to this channel here. <laughs> All right. So, um, how do I outline the all the other chords here now? The first chord we already learned by this pattern here. And then the E major I'm outlining with this string skipping pattern here. Okay, to be fair, it's not exactly an E major triad that we are outlining here. Uh, we have the root here, we have the major third here, but this one here is the fourth. So it's a little bit more kind of an add 11 kind of sound here. <laughs> And it blends really perfectly to the E major because we're going relatively slow, uh, relatively fast, sorry, to the scale. We're going here to the fifth, which now is again inside of the E major, the B. Going back to C major. Going to the next inversion of C major, so starting now on the fifth, going to the root and playing here. The third, the major third. And now we have again the Lydian 11. And now we are adding to get a little bit kind of more an interesting chromatical kind of sound here the E flat to the mix, which is actually the minor third. But this happens so fast, so it sounds a little bit more like a chromatic idea because we are going straight back to the E after that. So we have. You could also use the D instead, if you want to have it a little bit more inside of the scale. But I want to take the freedom to have to spice it a little bit more up, and therefore I choose the E flat here. Alright, and then we are going to the bitch of this lick, the end boss, which is this E major inversion. Sorry, you see it's uh, kind of a stretch here. <laughs> yes, this lick. And um, yeah, as you have seen it and recognized it, this is kind of a stretch and it's really, really hard to get the correct notes and not accidentally hitting something like... <laughs> like this sounded. It sounded like that when I first tried out. It sounded exactly like that when I first tried out this lick here. So again, we are starting off with the major third, then going straight to the octave, the E, going an octave below, and then adding the nine here, going here to the uh, fifths, sorry, and playing here again major third, fifths, and root note. So again, slowly and correctly, hopefully. Combined with the string skipping, this is really not easy, but it's worth to learn and to practice this. Why? Because it gives us some new perspectives on outlining arpeggios, playing arpeggios with this sequence, with this pattern here. It gives us some a little bit more kind of strength and stretchy positions so we can work as well on our stretches. And uh, it, it, it demonstrates perfectly what you can do with this kind of sequence by expanding your finger rings and your ideas. Again, if you want to be inspired with this kind of ideas, then check out Steven Taranto. On an Instagram, there's a guy called Bexby, Bexty. I'm not sure what his correct name is, um, but he's also a phenomenal guitar player for being 22 years old, and he does he does all this kind of stuff here. All right, and after we have played the E major two times, Now we are going back to the C major with the notes that we have in our regular C Lydian kind of scale with the D instead of the E flat. And also with the B here on the E string. And after we've played this one one time, we're going to D major, outlining D major like this. Again from this D shape here, starting on the major third. 
Going to the fifth root, major third, and then scale. Now the minor seven, because this is the note that we have in the E minor scale. Then again, C major, our first idea, first position. And then the B major, we are playing around with a little bit kind of harmonic, E harmonic minor kind of idea and sound, or B fridge and dominant if you want to see it like this. So we have the flat nine here. And then resolving to E major. All right, now for the picking, everything is picked. We are starting off with the down and an upstroke. This, those are two notes on one string, an even number of notes per string, so we are having downward pick slanting. And for that one note on the B string, one note is an uneven number per string, we have to go, we have to switch to the upward pick slanting. Again, one note on the E string, we're going back to downward pick slanting. So we have kind of cross picking here. And then we are playing all the time uneven number of notes on one string. 5 on the B and 3 on the E string. So we have upward pick slanting here first on the B string and then downward pick slanting. And then we can keep the downward pick slanting when we're going to the next inversion or when we're repeating this uh, kind of sequence. Alright, and this is my. S and this is today's lick. Go check out the tabs in the description box, learn the lick, practice the lick, master the lick, and have a lot of fun with it. And if you want some more licks and free lessons, then again, subscribe to this channel. I'm really, really thankful for the growth in the last past month. And yeah, I can't wait to see you in my next video. Cheers, and stay progress. Bye. Yay.